my kind of, it was supposed to be a workshop, but I think this layout is better suited for a talk. And we only have 30 minutes, so it's not, it's, it's gonna be kind of like follow along if you want, but you don't have to code if you don't want to. There's not really much coding. It's, a lot of it's understanding what's happening. So welcome to Zero Two Production with the serverless framework. Um, I, it sounds pretty ambitious as a title, but actually, You'll realize once you know what the serverless framework's about, it's not really that difficult. What I'm gonna cover, or what I'm gonna focus on, is mainly like what is serverless. So if you were here for the talk earlier, and like there's a whole new trend now about serverless, but how many of us are actually like clear on like what, what it is really? It's not really serverless, right? And then when you explain it to people who haven't heard of it before, they're like, but where does the code live? And is it in, it's in the cloud, right? You know, what's like somewhere in the cloud. So I'm gonna focus on that, when and why you would use it, and how to use it. So I'm gonna walk through how I went about setting up a production pipeline for mine. And then what I'm not gonna cover is actual programming skills um, and the minor details of each of the specific tools. So like the differences between the major cloud services, because a lot of that's actually subjective, I think, and it's, much, it's more personal preference or like dependent on your business needs and the testing frameworks. So what you'll need to follow along with my starter kit, which is linked in the next slide, is Node and Git, and you'll use that to install the serverless CLI. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. And for deploying, I've picked AWS because Mainly because I, I mean, I wanted to try Google Cloud Functions, but it's not available in the region that we were, like it's not available in London yet, and my work's based in London, and we have this whole GDPR thing. And <laughs> I'm sure some, a lot of you can relate to that, but yeah, it's a whole GDPR thing, and AWS is also very robust and mature. Um, and for um, CI, I've picked Circle CI because it's pretty, it's really easy. And once you see how easy it is, you're gonna use it too. And I think they have free builds as well. And a GitHub account. I mean, you could use GitLab, but I've not tried that personally. And there's only 30 minutes, so if you wanna ask a question, I've opened this Google audience tools thing, or you can tweet me. My Twitter handle is Diana with, an, with a one instead of an I. And by the end of this, Hopefully you'll be able to take home, well you will be able to take home this starter kit that we've published here. And the important thing is that you'd be able to understand what's happening in it. It's not just a bunch of code that you downloaded from someone else and it's like, wait, how do I run this? What's going on, huh? You know? So firstly, what is serverless? And I mean, we've heard a lot about like, of people talking about how they've implemented them in their like large scale organizations, but what does that really mean for us as a developer? Mainly speaking, it's an architectural style. And you can have multiple things that contribute to you building a serverless architecture. Um, and we're gonna focus on a framework which is written in Node.js, which is really cool. Um, and the point is that it's serverless for us as developers. Sorry, did not expect that to be loud. It's serverless for us, um, but it still relies on the server being managed by a cloud provider. What makes it serverless? Um, this is also known as the four tenets of serverless. What makes something serverless? When the developer doesn't have to worry about server administration, so provisioning, all of that. Um, the second one is pay per execution. So this is really important. Whereas with other providers like something like Heroku or Elastic Beanstalk, or GCP, like the, was, we're, I mean, we used Google App Engine for something else, but you're paying for this app that's living there, even if nobody's using it at 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, what's important about serverless is that it's pay per execution, and you deploy each of your code, your code gets split into functions. Well, we already write in functions, so the idea is, why not we just deploy it like that. And then each of them are stateless and they have their own resources and all of this is managed by the cloud provider. And for us as developers, we don't have to worry about that. And finally, 
the important thing is that it's event-driven. For something to be paper execution, you need something to trigger it. And that's why each function needs to be driven by an event which provides the context and the data. So how do cloud providers really do it? And I'm gonna use Lambda as an example. So imagine you have a get request. When it hits API gateway, what happens is Lambda starts spinning up a container to calculate a score. So the example here is to get a score for, in the example that I'm thinking about, it's about like candidate assessments. So the company I work at, we do, we're, we, we were, we're building this platform that restructures the way hiring works and focuses on metrics that actually tell you what, whether or not this candidate's gonna be good in your company. Um, and we completely removed the, the reliance on CVs. So things like scoring is quite important. So what, else, what we also do is we, we run analytics on job descriptions and questions. So the questions you ask your candidates in interviews, you also know is like what the readability score is for that, all of this stuff. So what happens when you have loads of requests? Lambda starts spinning up more containers to handle more requests. And this is the auto-scaling part, right? This is when Lambda is managing all of that for you. And then when the requests reduce, it scales down accordingly. So when and why should you, like, would you use it? Uh, some of this is kind of personal opinions, um, but some of this is actually like things that people have agreed on. So like I've mentioned, event-driven backend services that you need to auto-scale. Um, if you want to automate these tasks quickly, you can even like process data with it quickly uh, and create pipelines through different serverless functions. Um, and if you're prototyping, I think this is more of a personal opinion. So you want to try something and see whether people are going to use it without having to pay as much as you would for like a Heroku or an app, like running App Engine. And what we've used it for at Applied, so I've used it to integrate our hiring platform with other applicant tracking systems and assessment tools, so like video interviewing or um, trying to integrate with Taleo soon. So how do you get serverless? Um, you could become a specialist and try and work through the interface. Like you could set it up by yourself on the AWS interface and all of the stuff and like figure out how all of the different pieces fit together. But when you think about it, all of these providers are kind of slowly gravitating towards like a fixed way of doing things that's kind of like agreed because they're the best ways to do them, right? So why don't we just focus on building in JavaScript? So, um, which is something you can do using the serverless framework. It was released initially in October 2015, so actually it's very young, and the first stable release was nine months ago, so it's very young, but it's amazing. I'm not gonna lie, like seriously changed my life, okay? It's written in Node.js, and essentially it's a CLI toolkit that allows you to control a serverless application with flexibility, so you can switch for different, different cloud providers if you wanted to. You're not locked into a cloud provider. So you don't just have to start, stay with AWS if you started with AWS. You can switch to cloud functions if you want. Um, it's multilingual, so you can, they're starting to support more and more languages. Most of the provider guides that they have are focused on Node, which is awesome. And um, what else did I say? Yeah, kind of said what's on the slide. So let's do it, right? We, the serverless team actually, if you check out their website, it's serverless.com now. Who here has heard of them? Like who's tried using it? Okay. They have loads of guides now, actually, and loads of examples, and one thing I found when I started using it was that it, like, you do have to sit down and read through quite a bunch of things. So I have come up with this starter kit that's an extension of their template, and it includes linting, a test framework, and config for CI/CD. 
um, some, a basic database thing, um, and all of this other stuff. But it's not actually as crazy as it sounds. Uh, you can check out the starter kit in the link that I posted before. Um, and if you want to follow along, you can do this. If not, the slides, like these slides are already on the session for this, so you can download this and follow along at, at home. Um, but essentially, this serverless framework starts with a, um, a command line tool. It really is a tool. Um, and I can show you, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how it works. Oh no, it kind of disappeared. Yeah, so it's literally like that. When you pull up your serverless application and run it, this is me running it offline and looking at it. It just shows you everything that you've built. It's really simple. Um, and you can check it out more if you want. But how does it start? How do you get started in it? Wait, one second. Should, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <sighs> okay. So if you pull up my code and you look at this, this file, what can you see? So I'm gonna pull it up. Mm, maybe I'll pull it up here. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Okay, this is a... Um, okay, so I'm gonna pull up this. The whole idea of the serverless framework is that it starts in the YAML file, it starts in the config, and actually when you start, when you install it, it is tell, it provides you with all this really helpful text that kind of shows like, oh, all the things you can do and things you can specify. So it really is, it really can be this simple. Like deploying a new app doesn't need you to sit down and spin up your own container, build, do the whole Docker thing on your own. You can actually get a framework to do it for you. How amazing is that? Okay. So, you can choose what to exclude and include, and then this is when it gets interesting. So you tell the serverless tool exactly what you want from your provider, and they manage all of that for you. I mean, it works with your provider to handle all of that. And this is really interesting, if you wanted to make some of your things private, or your endpoints private, you can set an API key, and it spins it up for you. You don't have to go through the interface on AWS and click loads of different buttons to get it done. I know it sounds like I'm complaining about buttons on an interface, but two lines of code is a lot faster. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, then you specify all your permissions. It's all done in your serverless YAML file. So this config file is kind of like the driver's seat of your app or your service. And you declare your you declare and you configure your service, the functions, the provider, the runtime, events that trigger different functions and um, their execution. And you even specify resources that are required by each of your functions. So if you can see here, right, I, can, I set up like a very simple um, function that just calculates an epoch from a time. Don't know why I did it, but it was easy to do. So I thought I'd do it, and then I attach two events to it. And it's one that's a scheduled event, calls it every minute, and the other is an HTTP GET request. So you can do multiple things. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like on AWS later to show you actually, this is so much quicker. And finally, so I commented this out because I didn't want it to build a, a new table every time I spun it up, but you just specify your resources really simply, you can specify an S3 bucket. Here I've put a DynamoDB table. And all the guides for the specific like, things that you can tweak here are on the serverless website. And I mean, it is going through a few pages, but the guides are really, really good. So I'll, show, I'll bring them up later anyway. So uh, yeah, it's the driver's seat of your app an example of AWS specific config. So I talked about this. 
when I was going through that code. You can set all this up in one config file. That's really cool. Um, and that's why I said it changed my life. Okay, so yeah, so this is what I showed just now. It's really that straightforward. You don't have to read every single AWS doc and write your own CloudFormation templates. If you don't know what CloudFormation is, it's a tool that me manages resources. Like, how, how crazy is that? There's an entire tool that manages resources from AWS that you're gonna use. It's, it's crazy, but there's just so many things out there from these different cloud providers. And the serverless framework provides an easy way to, to control and use all of them without having to go and read all these docs and click through different AWS user interface pages. Uh, different AWS pages. So what really happens when you build on AWS using the serverless framework? So you specified all this config, and then the CLI tool, when you, when you run serverless deploy, it helps you create and configure and manage all of this through creating your own dedicated like stack for your service. And I mean, it's kind of equivalent for different cloud providers. But essentially, it spins up this template on AWS that, is, that kind of collects all the different functions that you're using, and then it does all the IAM roles for you, attaches the events and the resources as well. And this is all done through this file, one file. You don't have to have five different config files for AWS, you know, one. Okay, moving on to how does this look in real life. So on a function level, so this is what gets spun up. So this is an example of a very basic endpoint. And if you go and look, check out what serverless does for you when you spin it up, it does all of this from that one command, which runs one file. You don't have to go and click and add all of, or even write all the templates that add these together. I mean, unless you really want to. Unless you want to stick to that, I don't know. So how do we start? Right, so you've got this serverless YAML file. How, how do we start writing and getting our functions done? So if you look at what I wrote here, you have each individual function, and you've got the name of it, pretty obvious. Then you've got the handler, and this points to the, the file, the, the, the literal file where your function lives in. And I'm gonna pull that up next. I, let me see. I can probably bring up my code. One sec. Right, okay, so this is my, this is my actual um, repo for this, right. So the YAML file that I spoke about, and it all just kind of lives in that one folder. Like it's, but what, what I do actually is I have my vendor specific logic. So this logic is specific to AWS, where with each AWS function, like they have the event, the context the callback. I think Google Cloud does it slightly differently. Um, and then I just br handle my actual business logic. So this readability score is the flesh can say readability score, which is something we use. I mean, it's open source anyway. I mean, the calculation's online, so it's not really special code from us. <laughs> but what I do is I have all of my business code logic here in their own, like, their own folders, and then the vendor logic is in the index or the handler file. So, looking at my first endpoint. So I've got the hello event. And this is literally a, when you go to the root of the app, it just says like, hi, this is the version. But if you look at what needs what you need for that to happen, you just need it to be declared in, server, in the YAML file and in hello. Okay, so at this point, a lot of the serverless tutorials get you to just deploy the service and show that you can get it running. They show, oh, you can deploy it, you can invoke the function. What does the local setup look like? So I'm not gonna cover testing, but if you look at, if you wanted to 
look at how that all works. It's, pro it's in the starter kit. But what I'm going to talk about more, like in the last part, is the plugins. So plugins are components that are that the serverless kind of the serverless framework, like as a group, like they've really focused on investing in this, which is think like these different plugins. They're basically node modules that allow you to run non-business non-business logic across the community. Right, so running it offline. I'm gonna pull this up. So, in order for me to run this on offline, I just need to install the plugin in my YAML file and declare it in my YAML file, which is something I've done here. And then I just run it. It's really that simple. And it works with Postman, I mean, all of these works with Postman. And then, so what, you can extend this locally. So if you have more time, you can look through some of the two plugins I focus on, so scheduled jobs. To use it, you just declare it and then follow like what is needed for that plugin. And I've talked about this just now. The DynamoDB as well just requires its own client. Um, it's really, like it sounds, like when you read the description, you're probably like, oh, she's gonna like, like tell me all the crazy things about DynamoDB, but actually you don't need to do that much to get your own DB instance running and set it all up. So I can't, I don't have time to go into details for this, but all of the details are in my starter kit repo. So they're actually even in the readme. So I'll, I'll talk about that later. So here's the pipeline that works for me, because we used to use Heroku to run an app at where I'm, where I'm working at, and we wanted it to be that simple. With Heroku, you can just push from Git, like to GitHub, and it builds everything, it runs your CI stuff. So I wanted to do something similar. Um, and this is, what we, this is what we set up. And what I did essentially is just take the serverless deploy stuff and put it into my circle YAML file and set, and just put in my AWS credentials. So how does that look? You just add the project, create your credentials, and just add it as an environment variable. So this is from the serverless docs, and this is what I did. This is for local deploy, and this is what I did for my circle CI thing. And then I just get pushed. And if I zoom in here, I'm not sure if you can, okay, I can't zoom in. But you can see, like, it's telling me my, the API key is built. It's listing all the different endpoints I have. Like, how, how crazy. It's really that simple. It's really that simple now. Okay, sorry. So that's basically it. Zero to production. And you don't even have to spend days doing it. Have I? That's that's big good. <laughs> Thank you. So I was worried that I wouldn't have enough time for questions, but actually I have six minutes, and um, I've run. A, yeah, I have six minutes, so you can come find me here if you want, like a more personal question. I don't think we have any mic stuff, but I'm. I hope I haven't made it sound too simple. Hopefully not, because it really is this simple, right? And it took, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'm not gonna lie, when I started doing this, I, it took me like, a, like maybe a week to just read all the docs, figure things out, understand what's happening. So you wanna really understand that the, the YAML file is configuring everything. And actually, to show you it's really not that simple, you can look at all the different resources that I read through to come up with this start a kit and do it myself. <laughs> or just understand what's happening. But hopefully you will find this useful in your own life. Like you can actually sit down today and build a new app in half an hour or in a couple of hours if this is the first time you're using it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's, thank you for coming. I hope this is useful. <laughs>